Hey everybody, how's it going? My name's Andrew, and this is an AWS tutorial series on setting up Jenkins continuous integration in the cloud. In this tutorial series, we'll focus on a couple things. One, setting up the Jenkins master server, and then also setting up a couple Jenkins slave nodes. Um, these slave nodes are very, very important when you have a large Jenkins setup and a lot of jobs because Jenkins is smart enough to evenly distribute these jobs across the multiple different nodes so that you're not waiting on any one job to complete. So to get started, let's go ahead and launch a few instances. I'm gonna select the Amazon Linux AMI. We'll use a T2 Micro since this is just a demo. For a number of instances, we're gonna say three, one of which will be our Jenkins master and two will be our slave nodes. 8 gigabytes is fine for our storage, and we can tag these as Jenkins for now. The security group, I've already created one of wide open, which is inbound and outbound, all ports open. We'll review and launch, and we'll click launch. And I've already created an SSH key pair for myself. So now that our servers are all online, we want to first log into the Jenkins master server. And inside this server, we're going to create an SSH key. That SSH key, we're going to end up putting in the authorized keys file of both of the nodes, so that way they can all communicate between each other. And then we're also going to install Jenkins on the master server. So let's go ahead and log into that now. It's always important to run a yum update, just to make sure you have the latest. OK, great, and we do. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to create an SSH key. And we'll create it at this location, and that is perfectly fine. So now what we need to do is we need to cat out our newly created SSH key, and we're going to install it on both of our nodes. So let's go ahead and do that now. So here is my SSH key that I just created. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I've already logged into node 1. I've already logged into node 1 here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to echo my new SSH key and I'm going to put it right into the authorized keys file. Great, so now it's in there. So now we can exit out of this node and I've already went ahead and taken care of the SSH key on node 2. So now it's time to install uh, Jenkins on the Jenkins master server. So Jenkins has some really great documentation on that. So I just went to the install section of Jenkins and I'm going to run these few quick commands. So we'll copy this first one, paste it right in there. We'll run the second one. And now we're just going to install Jenkins. We'll say yes. And by default, Jenkins runs on port 8080. So depending on how you want to set up your security groups, you'll always need to have that port open. So now that Jenkins is installed, we're going to go ahead and start the service. OK, and Jenkins is now started. So let's go back to our master server and let's grab the IP address. And let's paste it into our browser and we'll go to port 8080. And we can see that Jenkins is getting ready to set up, so let's give this a moment. Great, so Jenkins is now up and running and ready to create new jobs. But before we create any jobs, we're going to want to link up those two nodes that we created earlier. So we're going to go ahead and click on Build Executor Status. And in here we can see our master node, which is great. So we're going to go ahead and click on New Node. We'll call this one Jenkins Node 1. We'll select Dumb Slave. And then in here, we're going to set the remote root directory to be home EC2 user. We'll utilize it as much as possible, and we're going to launch slave agents on the Unix machines via SSH. Our host, now this is very important here, our host for this is going to be over the private IP address. You have to make sure when using private IP addresses that you have your servers in the same availability zone so they can talk to each other over their internal network because you don't want to put the public IP and then you're going to be charged for bandwidth because bandwidth over the internal network is free. So we'll give that private IP as the host and we're going to add a credential. We'll say SSH username with private key. The username is going to be EC2 user 
And now the private key, we're going to enter from the one that we had created earlier. So remember, on and I'm logged into the Jenkins master server here. Earlier, we had catted out on, I'll do it again. Oops, sorry, not authorized keys. Um, we catted out this pub file. Well, when creating an SSH key, there's also an ID RSA file, and we'll cat that out. And so this is the file we're going to want to use. And we can paste that in there. And we can click Add. And we'll say keep the slave online as much as possible, and we'll select Save. And we'll refresh status, give it a second. And we can see that we are online. And if we keep clicking refresh, the response time should go back down to just under 5 milliseconds. So now we'll go ahead and add the second node. Click on New Node. But this time we can copy from an existing node. So we'll start typing into Jenkins. We'll grab this. And we will call this new node Jenkins Node 2. We can leave everything the same. The only thing we're going to change is the host. So we'll have to grab the internal IP of the Jenkins Node 2 server. You can paste that in there. We'll use the same exact credentials as we had on Node 1. That should connect and everything should be fine. And we'll go ahead and click Save. Now we can go back to our Nodes section. We can see that our Jenkins Node 2 is now online. So we can go ahead and click Refresh Status. And see our ping time is going down. Great, so we have our master and we have our two slaves. So if we go back to Jenkins, we can see our build executor status is we have our master set up and we have our two Jenkins nodes. Now on these nodes, we can have multiple different processes running. Um, for each one of these nodes, I've only configured it to just have one. So let's go ahead and create a new job. And we'll call this job one. We'll give it a freestyle project. And we're just going to do something simple where we are going to sleep for 10 seconds, just so I can show you that these jobs are executing on different servers. So we'll have a build step that we execute a shell command, and we're just going to say sleep 10 seconds. Go ahead and click Save. We'll go back to Jenkins, and we're going to create one more job. Call this job 2. This job too will do the exact same thing. Execute a shell command to sleep for 10 seconds. And we'll click save. And now what we'll do is we'll run both of these jobs. Click refresh and we can see that job two is running on the master server and job one is running on Jenkins node one. And if we had more jobs they could be spread out amongst the different nodes. So that concludes our tutorial on setting up Jenkins in the cloud. We went over creating a master server and installing Jenkins on it, as well as creating two nodes and linking them into your Jenkins build process. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. And please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.